Okay, so how would we go about drawing a pose from this angle? Okay, you might be wondering, uh, our lines technique won't work on such a pose like this. And you are half right, but what you'll need to do is you'll need to use some extra techniques. You will need to use perspective you also need to use a bit of shape, but everything else will work. Okay, so what the first thing I do is I make sure to match the measurement, the angle that I see on the pose, or the reference. What I'm doing right now is I'm drawing a perspective, uh, perspective grid somewhat what this is 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 that I am boxing the figure in a perspective grid of some sorts so first I draw some horizontal or sort of diagonal lines outwards matching the mat that I see right over here so this mat is our perspective box. This area will be a lot more narrow than this area. So this area will be much wider. So I will get this right here and I will put this end way out here so it can create our perspective mat. And you can read a lot more about this mat in a Loomis successful drawing. I recommend you pick up that book. It will teach you about this perspective mat that I'm doing here. Then I draw some diagonal X's on the ground plane and cut this X in half like that. So where this X is is where the half of the body will be. Okay, and up top of here will be where the head is, and everything here would have been where the legs will be. But since this case she's bending her legs, it will, it will fall around somewhere around here. Okay, now how do we get this body in here? I do a, a line of actions of sorts, so I see how the pose is pushing. I will draw and attempt to see the push of the body. So this here comes up there. So I didn't like that one, so I'm going to do it again. And yes, I like this one, so I'll stick with this one. You can see how this will be where the torso will be. This is where the neck, neck is coming up. And you can see here is where I see this area, her pelvis, coming down like that. The next order of business would be to start with the area that is most coming at us, and that is the pelvis area. So I will draw a circle. And where I see the circle, I will draw another line, and this would sort of contain the circle in a box, and that will help us with the perspective of the body. Now to get the limbs, I sort of do a different approach. We're not sort of just swiveling our lines this time. I will get a, the broadest brush that I have, which is this number three pen here that I have, custom brush, and I will pull my lines up to the, for the leg, I draw a circle for sort of like a joint for the leg, and I come through and I draw the foot that I see here. Okay, there we go. Now to get the other foot, the other knee, I check my angle. I see that this foot, this, this knee here is higher than this one. So I sort of ghost my line across and get that point, that joint here. And I draw my line down to the pelvis circle that I have created. I come around to create a gestural line and I swivel my line around to create the next foot. 
as you can see I gotta check my constantly check my angles across and yes this is quite good for the gesture great now to get the torso before we finish off everything else I th I will as I said from before last video that I like to incorporate some bit of musculature to give a bit of to get a bit of character so I will give a bit of muscle here it's, it's not exactly anatomy because in the anatomy stage we will add volumes you see I add this volume here and this volume here in the next stage but not in the gesture stage but in the gesture stage, I like to incorporate some musculature, a gesture for a muscul musculature. Okay, to get the torso, I follow the same line that I've created for the line of action. And so I try to connect that to the, the circle that I've created. I try to match the, oops, what have I done here? I try to match the the gestural lines that I've created to hit the circle to contain this form as as one whole, like so. Now the lines that I have created to, that follow the original, which is right here, the original gesture line of action to get the limbs, I go up from here you see this arrow that I've created right here I go up and I push through and I make arrows to guide my 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 sense of direction to where I'm going okay so I come over here I push up make sure that I don't make my lines too long so I can move through the body so I'm going here I make an arrow here, make a line here, and push up, and end it with a straight. I put a straight here, I put a straight here. So that finishes off my limb gesture for this side. For the head, I do the same thing. I put a volume to contain this area that I see in perspective and to finish the head I just put a circle I will denote the nose and I will put a jaw here and shade the jaw in there is another hand here I don't know if you can see it right here so we have to draw that in as well I do the same thing I come up where I see I drew a line that mimics the the line of action I come up I pull up so when I'm pulling up I pull up like this and I come like that so I pull through and I come up like this and I draw just a gesture of the hand and that will finish this gesture um, and then in the second stage, you will add volumes, as I mentioned, uh, for character, for stylistic purposes, and to note that this is on a ground plane, I like to add uh, princess hair, nice long hair to make sure that I know that this is, she's on a ground, and not, not to mention, not to know that she has actual long hair, but for my gestures, as I know, as you know, that I like to add character, I add some hair that's on the ground plane here and that will finish off the gesture for this pose and that is how you will draw a character in this direction see line does work you just have to use a bit of extra tools perspective and shape okay more examples coming your way soon